Hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial number 14 of the Lost in the Sea series. In the second part of rigging the octopus, we focus on creating a rig for the face of the octopus so we can control some facial expressions. Let's start with adding an inverse kinematics constraint to the head. So in edit mode we extrude this bone with E, rename it to add I key controller and with Alt P select clear parent. Now in pose mode select the add I key controller first and then the add 02 bone and press Ctrl Shift C. Now select inverse kinematics and set the chain length to 3 so we can have influence till the neck. And this will help us make the octopus head lean forward and backwards as you can see. Now we just want to add a limit location constraint to create a safe area. So let's go to this drop down menu and select limit location. Set it to local space. Then the quick way I used to discover the limits is locking every minimum and maximum and uh, in the minimums put value like uh, minus 10 or more and in the maximums put a value of 10. Now if you look at the local x, y and z axis we see an arrow. That arrow points to the positive values and corresponds to the maximums in the limit location constraint. So, if we push in the y-axis up, we discover the maximum y and we can see that it's too much. So let's lower this value and as we lower it, the bone follows along, as you can see, and that's pretty cool. Now, in the y-axis down, we discover the minimum value and see it is too much, so let's lower that value down to something like this. And now to reset the position, press Alt-G. And let's see how the maximum x is behaving. As you can see it's too much, so lower it. And uh, the minimum is also too high. Do the same process for the z-axis. And now we have created a safe area where we can move the bone. Now let's set up the rig for the eyes. And first if your armature is in a different place than the original, you either need to select all with day and press Alt G to reset the position, or you will need to go to the armature tab and here select rest position. And you can see that it goes back to original position. Now with the eye selected, we want to create a vertex group and match the name to the bone that will control it. In this case it's the right eye. Then in object mode press Ctrl tab to enter in weight paint and paint all red like this. And do the same thing for the left eye basically. Now the pupils of the eyes will also need to have a vertex group for the respective bones. This means we are going to create a vertex group for the right pupil and rename it right high. Then we also need vertex group for the left pupil and rename it left eye. And paint all red like we did with the eye. Just do the same thing for the left pupil. And that's it, now the pupils and the eyes are attached to the armature and it will follow them when we will be animating. But maybe if you try to move a bone in the pose mode, Blender gives an error. That's because we need to get out of the rest position and select the pose position. For the pupils of the eyes, we are going to use two shape keys. One to make it bigger and the other to make it smaller. So go to this panel and under the vertex groups, we can see the shape keys. We can press the plus sign and it will create the basis key, which is the basic state of the geometry of the object. Press again to add the first key and again to add the second key. Rename them to bigger and the other one to smaller. Select the bigger one 
enter in edit mode with tab and select everything with A, scale it up with S to a fixed value like uh, minus 1.4, it depends on yours. The idea is that in the left pupil we can scale up the same value and both are equally dilated. Go back to object mode, make sure the bigger key is at zero and now select the smaller key, enter in edit mode like this and scale it down. Now if we go back to object mode and we play with the values we can see that it immediately takes effect. Just do the same thing for the right eye. And now we only need two more things. Shape keys to close and open the eyes. And something for the eyes to look at. So first, let's go ahead and create the shape keys. Don't mind about that green bone in front of the eyes. That's the bone where the eyes are looking at. And we're gonna see it in just a few moments. Now select the right eye and under the vertex group we have the shape keys. So press the plus sign to add the basis key and 4 more keys. 4 keys because 2 are for the upper pupil and the other 2 are for the lower pupil. And each one will close and open. So that makes 4. Rename the first one to up underscore close and the other to up underscore open. The next one is the down underscore close and the last one is the down underscore open. Select the up underscore close key and enter in edit mode. Now the idea is when the upper pupil closes reach the mid of the eye because the lower one will close the rest of the eye. So select these vertices and push them to somewhere near the mid. We can move the vertices only in their edges by pressing two times G as you can see. Now some people may find it easier to play around with the faces and create the shape we want. There is no problem with that, as long as we all move this eyelid to the middle we are good. Now in object mode when we push the value of the shape key higher, the upper eyelid will close. But that doesn't look very natural. So what we need is to get into edit mode and if we push down these rings we will get a more realistic feeling. And now we can go back to object mode and now if we play with the values we can see that it takes effect and it's much more realistic. Make sure the up underscore close is set to zero. For the up underscore open key let's select it and enter in edit mode. And the idea is to open the upper eyelid, but not too much so it doesn't look too absurd. And we can edit it in the following way, either we push the vertices in the z-axis, or by pressing 2 times G and the vertices will fall along their edges. Give a few adjustments until we get to something like this. For the lower eyelid, we start with the down underscore close key, and now we move this vertice to the mid, like we did with the up underscore closed key. This time we have to make sure it will end up closing the eyes when both keys are at the value of 1. So here we can see that the eye could be closing a little bit better, and I decided that the upper eyelid would need some changes and made those changes until it was closed. You can also change the lower eyelid if you want. Try to find out what fits you best. The down underscore open key is pretty much the same as the up underscore open key. So go ahead and make sure it doesn't open too much. Now we have to repeat the creation of these four keys to the left eye. So let's create something for the eyes to look at. So basically with the armor to select it, go into edit mode and the idea is that we create a bone by pressing shift A and we move it to this position, not too far or too near from the eyes as you can see. And it has to be rotated 90 degrees. Rename it to eyes control and make sure to be in the front orthogonal view 
you can press 5 to switch between orthogonal and perspective view and align the head and the tail of the bone to the eyes just like I'm doing. Now that we have this bone, we can select the right eye and go to the constraints tab and in the drop down menu select a track 2. In the target we select octopus armature and we go select the bone we created which is the eyes controller. Most of the times the eye doesn't point to the right place and we need to go to the object tab and in the display separator select axis. Now we can see that the Z axis is pointing up and the Y axis is pointing towards the eyes controller bone. And now we say in the track to constraint that we want the X axis to the bone. And that's when the eye now looks in the right direction as you can see. Now for the left eye is pretty much the same, add the track 2, select the octopus armature and the eyes controller bone and select the X axis. But now the main difference is that we want the left eye to look at the tail of our bone and not at the head of our bone. So let's push this value to 1 and now as you can see both eyes are pointing in the right direction. We only need to parent the right pupil to the right eye and the left pupil to the left eye, just like this. And now everything works fine. We only need one more thing, which is the limit location in our eyes controller. So we can move it in a safe area, like we did with the head eye key controller. So basically we set to local space, don't forget that. Then we lock every minimum and maximum and set value a bit high, like minus 10 in the minimums and 10 in the maximums. And now you should already know the drill. We select an axis and push in the direction of the arrow and we discover the maximum value. If you see that this value is too high, we go to the maximum and we lower it. And basically we do the same process for the minimum and the maximum, like we did before. Now to animate, we only need the drivers for the shape keys, but let's find out what that is in the third part of the rig. So thanks for watching, subscribe for weekly updates and see you in the third part of the rig.